There's a lot of misconceptions out there about how to set gain properly. A lot of people do it wrong. And actually, a lot of people do it right and don't know why they're doing it right. So we're going to go into some example recordings where I exaggerate the effects of it and you can actually hear why you need to set the gain in a certain area. A lot of people have different strategies on how to do this. There's a lot of good strategies out there. I'm just going to show you my strategy. But regardless of which strategy you use, there's certain rules that apply. So you don't want it to be too quiet because you want to optimize your signal to noise ratio. And you don't want it to be too loud because you only have so much room available. And if you go over that, you're going into clipping and that's going to sound bad. So my strategy is super simple. I just look at the size of the recorded waveform. If it's too loud, you can see that it's clipping. And if it's too quiet, you can hardly see the waveform at all. So from looking at the waveform, this is about the border of what I would consider to be too quiet. I wouldn't want it any quieter than this. I would turn up the gain. And this is about the limit where I would consider it to be too loud. So in this circumstance, I would probably turn the gain down just a hair. But as long as the visual appearance of the waveform is anywhere in between these two examples, you're good. Now, this waveform right here is in between those two examples, but it's still fairly quiet. And a lot of people will look at that and want to turn the gain up because there's a misconception out there that louder is better. You see, louder would theoretically give you a better signal to noise ratio. But let's talk about the signal to noise ratio a little bit. And I'm going to explain and demonstrate why you don't need to be any louder than this. So there's two sources of noise. So two different sources of signal to noise ratios that you're working with. One is from the preamp itself. We talked about that, the EIN. The preamp makes noise. But seeing as the preamp actually provides maximum gain at all times, and you're only reducing the output, the actual ratio of signal to noise doesn't change regardless of the gain setting. So that signal to noise ratio is fixed. There's nothing you can do about it other than getting a better preamp. The other source of noise is from the converters, the actual circuitry that converts the analog signal to digital. The actual amount of noise that it adds is extremely low, and better quality analog to digital converters will add less noise, but they all add noise. So you want to turn your gain up on the preamp so that you surpass this noise from the analog to digital converters, and you want to surpass it by a large margin. Actually, the farther you surpass it, the better your signal to noise ratio. Now I'm going to go into detail on this. So the test that I did is I recorded an acoustic guitar with actually the same microphone here. It's the ISK ICDM. It's a dynamic microphone and typical of any dynamic microphone, they have a lower output than most condensers, which means they need more gain from the preamp. So the first recording I did, I had the preamp gain turned all the way down so that there's barely any signal coming out of the preamp going into the audio interface. And then what I did is I digitally turned up the gain within the DAW to turn up the gain of both the recorded guitar and it's also turning up the gain of the noise from the conversion. So let's take a quick look at what I got going on here. Um, I've got eight decibels of preamp gain and we're gonna zoom in on the recorded track. Zooming way in, as you can see, well, as you can't see, there's you can't even see the waveform populated here. It The, the signal is just so weak, it didn't even register. So we're gonna give this a listen. So as you can hear, there's a lot of noise there. The signal is so weak, I had to put a lot of digital gain there. Here's all the gain that I put on. There's 24 decibels, another 24 decibels, and then, uh, and then 11 decibels. So a total of 59 decibels of digital gain. That's how low this signal is. Um, yeah, that's pretty noisy. So I would say that the guitar volume is roughly the same volume as the noise from the conversion. So we're gonna call this a one-to-one -one signal to noise ratio. And I put that right there on the track. Yeah, so if this is a one-to-one -one signal to noise ratio, if I boost the gain on the preamp by 11 decibels and then turn down the digital gain here by 11 decibels so that the guitar is roughly the same volume, but boosting the gain on the preamp actually boosts the volume by about four times. So now we've got 19 decibels of gain on the preamp and our signal to noise ratio is four to one. Let's give it a listen. Compared to the first one. So as you can hear with a four to one signal to noise ratio, the noise is quite a bit quieter than the first one. And then I boosted the gain again by another 11 decibels. So now we're on this track. So we're at 30 decibels of gain. And that's another four times 
increase of volume coming out of the preamp. So now compared to the noise of the conversion, our signal to noise ratio is 16 to one. And here's how it sounds. Now you can barely even hear any of that background noise. This uh, 16 to one signal to noise ratio is starting to get, it's starting to sound pretty good compared to the four to one. And then 16 to one. You can barely even hear that noise. You can hear it a little bit, but it's almost gone. As you can see, we're still recording at such a low level that it doesn't even register. So moving on, I increased the gain by another 11 decibels. So again, that's four times louder. So now our signal to noise ratio is 64 to one. And if we zoom in on the waveform, we're recording loud enough now that you can start to see the waveform just a little bit. It's still barely registering, but you can see it. And here's how it sounds. Compared to 16 to one. So you can definitely hear that the noise is significantly better. Um, there still is a tiny little bit of noise there, but it's getting to the point where it's negligible. Moving on. So now I'm at 52 decibels of gain on the preamp. Again, a four times boost of volume. So our signal to noise ratio is 256 to one. And here's how it sounds. Compared to 64 to one. At this point, the noise from the conversion is inaudible. If I zoom in on the waveform, well, actually, even right now at a normal zoom level, you can see the wave just a tiny little bit. If you zoom in, you can see it pretty clearly. There we go, there's the wave. So this is starting to get into the realm of acceptable recording volumes. You wouldn't wanna record any lower than this because you can hear that like, there's a tiny bit of noise. I mean, it's not much, but you don't want any noise at all. So and you want to have the best signal to noise ratio possible. Um, but at some point it becomes negligible that the preamp noise is so much more than the conversion noise that it just doesn't matter. And actually anything beyond this kind of gets into that realm. Um, so let's take a look at the next one that I recorded. Again, another 11 decibels of gain on the preamp. So it's four times louder. So our signal to noise ratio now is 1024 to one. You can see the waveform pretty clearly here. And here's how it sounds. Compared to the previous one. There's not really any audible difference in the noise level. They're both extremely quiet um, and the guitar sounds just as good in both of them. So we've surpassed the point where the noise from the conversion is any issue at all. Um, and this final one that I've done, this is about the lowest that I would recommend recording at. My strategy for setting preamp gain is to just look at the recorded signal. So I could look at that and be like, yeah, that's fine. Or if I'm looking at a signal like this, and be like, yeah, that's a little too weak. I'd want to turn it up until it gets at least to that. And as I've just demonstrated, this is well above the noise floor of the conversion. And the preamp gain doesn't get worse as you turn the gain up. The ratio stays the same, but the preamp noise is going to far surpass the noise from the conversion. So these are all matched so that the guitar is the same volume and we are only listening to the difference of how much noise there is. So I'm going to play the first one and I'm just going to go through them so that you can hear the difference in noise as the ratio of signal to noise gets better. So as you can hear, it's a pretty negligible difference between the 256 to one and the 1024 to one. Most of the noise that we're hearing is actually the noise from the preamp itself. And going with a higher signal level than this last one here, 
isn't going to give you any better of a signal-to-noise ratio. Let's take a look at some electric guitar here that I recorded. So this first one, this is definitely too hot. This is what you don't want to see. You don't want to see flat lining anywhere because that's going to cause audible distortion. And even all along here, like it's still not clipping, but there's no headroom. Like right there, it clipped a little bit. And then here it's clipping pretty hard. This is too hot. You want to turn your gain down if your waveform is looking like this. This here, well, this is not too bad, but it's still a little bit too hot. You still want to turn it down because well, that almost clipped. You want to have a little more headroom than that. And right here, it actually did clip. You see, for most of this, most of his levels, it's actually pretty good. But you want to have your gain set low enough so that it works for the majority of the recording. And also when they go and play something extra loud, like in a loud part, you don't clip. That's the most important part right there. No clipping allowed. So if you turn your gain down a little more, there we go. This is a pretty nice recording level. This is about as loud as you would want it. So in the normal volume sections, there's more than enough gain here to get a good signal to noise ratio. And he can go and play loud and there's still lots of headroom. Even in these loud parts, there's lots of headroom that he could play louder and you're still not gonna go into clipping. This one here, you're still way above the noise floor even when they're playing quietly and there's tons of headroom and then even if you set your gain a little higher than this or a little lower than this, like, this is good. And then this one here, this is about the lowest setting you would want to go. This is still perfectly acceptable, um, but I just wouldn't go any lower than that. Like this here, this is a little bit too low. You're starting to get into the range where the noise floor from the conversion, it's not an issue. It's still extremely low, but I mean, you, you don't want it to be there at all. So I would go just a little bit higher than this, um, like I said, at least to this. So just for reference, I also included this one here. This is, you remember the test we did just a little while ago? This was the 256 to one noise ratio. So you can see like, yeah, the waveform is still pretty small. It's about the same size as this. Like I, I like to record a little bit louder than this. Um, but even if you remember from listening to this, like the noise floor here was negligible. There was hardly any noise at all. So yeah, I would recommend setting your levels anywhere between this and this to be ideal. I mean, this is, this one here is not bad. Like, eh, that's not really going to be noticeable that like tiny little bit of clipping like that is not bad, but there's no reason for it. There's absolutely no disadvantage. There's no loss in sound quality from going to a recording level of this here. Like there's, there's just no difference in sound quality from this to this. So there's no reason not to record lower so that you avoid clipping. That clipping is no good. Okay, another misconception that people have about recording levels is some people say that you should record louder so that it uses a greater percentage of the bits available and using more bits will give you better resolution. And that is just simply not an issue. And the reason it's not an issue is because you should be recording at 24 bits. If you're recording at 16 bits, then yeah, it's an issue and you should record as loud as possible to get as much resolution as you can. But nowadays, 24 bit is the standard for recording and 24 bits has way more resolution than 16-bit. I'm gonna use 16-bit as a reference because that's the standard for CD quality. Any music from a CD is actually 16-bit and it sounds pretty good. Well, 24-bit has 256 times more resolution than 16-bit. So if you work that out to a percentage, then 16-bit has 0.4% of the resolution of 24-bit. So if you're recording at 24-bit and you're only using 0.4% of the space available, you're still getting the bit depth resolution of CD quality. And if you're recording at that low of a level, you might have problems with your signal to noise ratio just from the conversion noise. You'd have to be recording extremely quiet to be using less bits than CD quality. So if you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up down there and give this video a like. I would really appreciate that. Also, you can subscribe to this channel because I'm coming out with lots more videos. I'm uploading an entire audio engineering course and every once in a while a little video about certain topics here and there. So subscribe and then you'll get all that content free of charge.